Okay, so you got it recording? Mm -hmm. So here we're going to uh, you know, disassemble and clean the super loop. Mm -hmm. um, you can see the super loop is basically a big glass tube with some fittings at the end. It has a sheath that protects it. And we're going to disassemble it. So you basically just unscrew the ends and you pull it all apart. We have these I don't know, uh, stir bar fetchers and they work really great for knocking out this plunger. And then I also like to get some paper towels ready. Just so I have places to put stuff. So this is this is the most expensive part of the loop, and so what you want to do is make sure that if you set this down, it doesn't roll away. So again, I often will have I'll set it like between two of the caps just so it doesn't you know tends not to roll away. Mm -hmm. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna start by washing this off first. going to get it from both ends. You got to be a little careful because this super loop has been chipped a few times. And then I'll wash off these. You generally don't have to unscrew the Teflon from the fittings. You know, just get these kind of clean and straight off. Uh, if you need to unscrew them, you can. I mean, there's nothing magic about it, so they can be unscrewed and disassembled. And then typically I put the longer tube at the bottom of the loop. And so the bottom of the loop is the part of the loop with zero on it. And if you look at this fitting, there's a little slit there, there's a line. So I'm gonna put that in, and then I'm gonna turn it. And it's hard to see here, but I'm gonna turn it so that there's actually a little etched arrow in the loop. And I'm gonna turn it so that that line lines up pretty much with the etched arrow. What that does is if the solution is flowing down from the top, it actually gives the solution a, a pathway to flow into the, the bottom of the loop. And so having the alignment is actually pretty important. Now I can put the bottom on. Screw it on tight. Again, after you tighten it, it might have moved a little bit, so you can always sort of check that out but it's still pretty well aligned here. Now rinse off the plunger. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna fill the loop. I'm gonna try to avoid any bubbles. So I actually try to overfill it if I can. And then I'm gonna drop this plunger on, black side down, and you see there's a bubble there. Mm -hmm. So sometimes you can just get it out by shaking, but other times you actually have to disassemble the whole thing. And probably that happened because I just wasn't fast enough.
So I'll reassemble, realign, screw back on. Again, you want it. You want to almost want there to be like a a surface tension, mm -hmm. which is sometimes hard because it's off. It is leaking out the bottom of the tube, right? But whatever. You can kind of put it in there with an angle, and then yeah, that looks good. So no bubbles. I'm not going to worry about the top for now, because what I'm going to do is I'm going to push this through. I'm taking the top, and I'm going to put it in, and notice how the solution's coming out. So this is actually washing the bottom of the tube as I, as I push down on the top. Once that's down all the way, I'm going to pull it up. And now I'm going to top off. And I'm going to push it down again, and what you'll see is the solution will come out of the top, and now I'm washing the top of the tube. Uh -huh. So by doing it this way, I actually flush this out with water, I flush this out with water, and the tube is basically containing water with no bubbles. At this point, I can sort of start drying things off. You know, the drier this is, the easier it is to find leaks later on. Always put the, the you know, sleeve on, because this will protect you if the loop shatters, which has only happened to me once, but it has happened. Well, it ha didn't happen to me, it happened to a, a student who hooked it up wrong. And forgot to put the pressure limit on, so. So now everything is tight, there's no bubbles, it's relatively dry. So now it's time to hook it up. So now it's clean. Are you done? I am, thanks Rich. Yep. Thank you. So again, we have this uh, super loop holder. So it fits in there. And depending on, you know, again, the the top of the loop, so here's the injection valve, the top of the loop has to go into the bottom of the injection valve, or the lower port in the injection valve, yeah, and get around there. And the, the bottom of the loop goes up here. And so sometimes that means you've got to move things around, right? And so we don't actually often run the 50 ml loop on this particular instrument. So I'm gonna just re remove this and lower it so that we have a little bit more room. And now I can hook the bottom of the loop up to the, or to the top of the, or the bottom of the injection valve up to the top of the loop. And then this goes in here. Now I'm not gonna do this quite yet because I wanna get this, I wanna clean out the injection valve, right? So I'll be right back. I'm gonna fill up this syringe with some water. Mm -hmm. going to plug this in mm -hmm. and if I if I squirt that out you can see water's coming out of the the valve to, or the port too and that's basically just oops that's basically just flushing the injection valve and getting any residual junk that might have been there from the last prep and so again the bottom of the loop goes into that particular valve, port two. And so what remains is Okay. 
this. Everything still looks like it's working. Um, is we gotta basically, you know, this is right now water. We wanna make sure it's our buffer, right? And so I'm gonna hit continue. So it should start pumping again. We go here into manual. So five ml per minute is fine. We can, we're gonna take the, the column offline. So actually what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna, I'm gonna end this. Cause we're done with, we're, we're done washing, or we're done washing the column for now. We'll have to go back to it in a second. But anyway, so to start flushing the loop, we're gonna go manual pump. Again, always put the pressure in first. If you look at the glass tube, it says that the maximum pressure is four megapascals. So that's what you should put in. So our alarm pressure for the loop is four. We usually never come close, but we're gonna use a flow rate now of 10 ml per minute. Our column is still, you know, it defaults to bypass, so it's not gonna go over our column but we want our injection valve now to be inject. And so what that means is it's, it, you know, you can think of this as saying it's going to inject from the loop onto whatever is downstream. You know, if we have a column, it's gonna inject on the column, but right now it's just going to waste in the bypass. But it's basically, even though you're often injecting into this injection port, when, from the machine's perspective, when the, the loop is set to inject, it's putting the stuff on, from the loop onto the column. So it's injecting from the loop onto the column. Mm -hmm. So I'll hit that inject, and now I'll hit execute. And what you should start seeing, if we hooked everything up right, is that this now starts flowing down. So up here is our buffer from buffer A, down here below the plunger is our water and we're basically flushing out or we're starting to flush out the loop with the buffer that we want. At this point you need to take a look at the loop and make sure that nothing is leaking and so I'm looking down here at the fitting down here, I'm looking up here to make sure there's no drips forming, I'm looking at the, the um, finger tight fittings around the injection valves and right now nothing seems to be leaking. Another surefire way to test, test for leaks is to see, you know, I'm running at 10 ml per minute. Does it take about a minute to get down to the 40 ml? Um, if, if not, then that means that there's probably solution going somewhere else or buffer going somewhere else. So, but it just hit 10, we're right at 40. And so now what we're going to see is basically this will this will go through to the bottom. I usually run it a little past 50 ml just so that everything is sort of cleared out. But just for observations, notice that since we have water in here that doesn't absorb light, all of the UV vis has gone down to zero, or well actually less than zero because it's we we uh, auto zeroed with our buffer. And so the UV vis is, has flattened out. The conductivity has gone down since there's no salt in this. And um, yeah, we're basically just running it until it uh, gets to the bottom. Sometimes if there's a leak in the Teflon, you can actually see it sort of pooling up here in between the sleeve. And again, the idea behind this is that by putting your sample into the loop and using this plunger to push it through, your sample never has to come in touch with or come in contact with anything in the pumps. And so it's designed to preserve your, the life of, of the pumps. You know, in principle, you could you know, just stick the tubing from buffer A into your sample and pump buffer A directly into the tube. But that would tend to, you know, put whatever gunk is in buffer is in your protein sample onto the pump, and then that would shorten the lifetime of the pump.
There shouldn't be any air bubbles coming in here at this point. And again, if you check the fraction collector on the other side, it's, it's still flowing through. One thing that you do, you can notice is, you know, we talked about this sort of display here. If I look here right now, if I go here to, you know, right now it's buffer A, but if you really are careful and you follow all the connections here, you can see it's coming from the pump, going through the injection valve. This squiggly line is the loop. So it's going through the injection valve, over the loop, back out the injection valve, and then downstream to whatever the column or whatever it is. So this does change, but it's it's very subtle, and you kind of have to really pay attention to see if it. So that's why I don't you know don't really pay attention usually. It's much more easier just to say, oh yeah, the injection valve is up here to inject, and and note that. Our volume, our accumulated volume is about, is getting close to 50. So again, it's getting close to 50 here. Again, another sign that there's no leak. Once this gets to the bottom, we'll see the UV shoot up back, it should shoot up back to zero because we've already auto zeroed everything at, at, um, at, at the appropriate UV wavelength. And then what should happen is our uh, conductivity should also level off or, or you know jump up to where we're at before um, so and because of this this is one of the reasons why I like to let it run until it equilibrates because you know every time it comes off you know there's still gonna be some jumping around I figure every time these valves move a little bit of stuff comes off of them uh, and so you know I, I wait until basically this looks you know all these lines look like they've sort of flattened out and that way I know that you know everything up here is is my buffer a and everything you know downstream is also buffer a so usually 10 milliliters is long enough to do that and you can see we've just crossed 60 and most of these are all flat So now we can hit end, and now the loop is equilibrated and it's clean and it's ready to go.